Welcome to the Zono Sports Show, where you know Zonos. Some might say the sun rises in the east, but sets in the west. Now, when it comes to the NBA playoffs, we don't know which way the sun's going to rise at the end of the day. Once it's all said and done, the NBA Finals, where will it lie? The east or the west? Both conference finals are finally in motion. Game six of the Boston and Wizards series, second round of the playoffs. The Great Wall of D.C. held firm. If you saw that game Friday night, John Wall snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. John Wall, he is an interesting player because he's somebody who, before Friday night, I saw LeBron, KD, Chef Curry, all of them right here at this level. Now, off of the back of that shot, by him saving his team late in that game to win and beat Boston in Game 6 and force a Game 7, John Wall was here, but I think I'm going to put him right here. I won't put him here yet, but he's very, very close. Now, I will say that's just my figurative ladder of NBA big shots or stars, whatever you want to call them, but John Wall, great player. Can't take that away from him. Now, we move forward to Game 7. Who would win? The home teams won this game the last 10 times of the series. Obviously, we all know that Boston pulled it out. Luck of the Irish was in full effect. The Celtics win by 10. Isaiah Thomas, of course he's going to get his. He always does. He scored 33 one game, dropped 53 in the overtime. This guy is always going to come and play, especially in the fourth quarter. That's why I call him Mr. Fourth Quarter. 29 points, so you know you're going to get production out of him. Avery Bradley, he had about 15 or 14, somewhere around there. But there's a rare specimen that hails from the six, meaning Toronto. Dwelled and was forged in a cave near Spokane, Washington. Yes, Kelly O'Linick was the hero. Man bun! Kelly O'Linick, 26 points, 10 for 14 shooting. The unlikely hero. The man bun comes to the rescue, Mr. Man Bun. Now, I will say I wouldn't wear a man bun, but hey, whatever floats your boat, go ahead and rock it. Kelly O'Linick. Looked like the guy that we saw when he was at Gonzaga. Those shots he made, I wasn't too surprised because he had the sauce like that when he was playing for Mark Few back in the day. Kelly Olenek, if he's a guy that can come off of the bench and get production like that, watch out for him, Cleveland. I will say Kelly Olenek showed me last night that he's got some juice in the tank over there on that bench. Don't short look him because he is seven feet tall if you look him up. Now, Washington... Where were your bench points? That's what I've got to ask Scott Brooks. Five points off the bench. They played Brandon Jennings, what, six minutes? And uh, Ian, Ian Mahimi, they played him ele- uh, 11 minutes. Why did Kelly, o- Kelly Oubre not play? Especially knowing that he'd garner some, some strength and some uh, furiosity from somewhere within, considering he got into it with Olenek. Maybe you put him on, on Olenek and maybe it has some kind of mental effect. I don't know. But Kelly Oubre should have played Scott Brooks. I think you got tight as a coach. You said, I've got to roll with this set of guys. But you forget that your bench has played a large, significant role in getting you to this point A Game 7. Bradley Bill, he's a bona fide superstar, bona fide alpha dog. Now, those bench points, Boston, they got 40-plus, and then Washington only got five points. Bradley Bill can't do it all himself. I mean, yes, he had 38 points. When he needs to be an alpha dog, he can be that. Um, but I think that John Wall, he just looked like he was out of gas. 18 points. I mean, what else do you want this man to do? He's done it all the whole series, the whole playoffs for this team. He's done it all season. But Bradley Bill stepped up when it counted. So I can't say John Wall didn't produce. He got a solid 18, had a few rebounds, had a few assists, but was not the guy that we saw in game six, which is totally understandable because he expended a lot of energy. But Washington, in my opinion, they're lacking a collective competitive mindset. I watched him on a t- during a timeout one time on the bench. Bradley Bill had to stand up and rally the troops because they got down about 15, and they were, they were upset, and everybody was over there with their heads down. And Bradley Bill is like, come on, guys. Wake up. We're still in the game. So that team, they are not mentally tough. They don't have a lot of mental fortitude. I think this is great for them that they could make it to a Game 7 in the second round because they're close. But they need one more piece, maybe. But that competitive fire as a unit, they've got to find a way to cultivate that within that locker room. And it's up to Bradley Bill and John Wall. But Washington, you got to keep those two pieces. Cleveland, get off the sofa. you got a game Wednesday night. Can Boston shoot the three ball like they did early against the Wizards in this series? 
If they can do that, I think Washington, I mean, excuse me, I think Boston will have a legitimate shot to take down the Cavaliers and make it to the conference finals. And we've seen the past two seasons, they've had some success against the Warriors. So you get to their Boston, anything could happen. But I will say I do still think that King James ain't letting that happen. And he's going to have that lockdown. You can't take him out. So was the wait too long for Braun? We'll find out Wednesday. But the one seed concede that Cleveland pulled and let Boston get that, will it come back to bite them? Because Boston has home court, and Cleveland's got to make a trip and take a trip to Boston on Wednesday. So we shall see what happens tomorrow. Stay tuned. I'm going to talk about it Thursday. Western Conference Finals Game 1. Warriors snag it late after fighting back all night. Now, why did they fight back all night? San Antonio was up 23 points in the third quarter. Everything looked good. Everybody's wondering the Oracle. Oh, my goodness. Chef Curry, KD, Clay Thompson, Draymond. Why are we losing by 23? And then, all of a sudden, Kawhi rolls his ankle again. Now, here's why he rolled his ankle. If you watch the game, Jaja Pachulia, uh, he goes up for a closeout, gets underneath him. Jaja Pachulia, you grimy gizzard. You knew what you were doing when you slid under Kawhi Leonard. You did the old, uh, I'm going to kick the foot under, and he lands on your ankle, sprains it. He goes out, and what do the Warriors do? They make this epic uh, comeback, and they win the game by two points. But, come on now. This type of move by Jaja Pachulia taking out Kawhi Leonard, the Spurs' best player, which decreased their competitive edge substantially, that was a dirty play, and it would have stopped any pickup game in any city on any court in America. Everybody who's played a pickup game in the streets knows that. He's got something to prove. Now, I remember Jaja Pachulia back in Game 6, 2008, against Kevin Garnett in Phillips Arena against the Hawks, against that 07 Celtics team. I remember when Jaja Pachulia got into it with KG and tried to get in his face and got snarky uh, to, to force that Game 7. But Jaja, over the years, you went from being competitive to just being dirty. They're showing your clips on TV, and I mean, yeah, I knew you've done a few things, but sheesh, all the stuff in Dallas with the trying to pull Kawhi's arm and the elbow on Patty Mills. Jaja, if you keep doing that, I guarantee that there's going to be teams that are going to take shots at you. Now, can you handle it when you take a little elbow from David West? Can you handle it when you take one of those below-the-belt shots from Jamon Green? Well, excuse me, you're lucky he's on your team, but <laughs> somebody that may not be on your team, can you handle it when they turn the tables on you and make you the target? Because you want to target everybody else. Kawhi Leonard's a nice guy. I've talked to Kawhi. You know, he, Pop didn't like this, but Kawhi, he's too cool. I talked to the man back in 2011, you know, and my, a buddy of mine, Tyrone Shelley, played for San Diego State, played for Steve Fisher. He was buddies with... Kawhi Leonard, we called him on Skype, and you know, he's like, hey, man, you know, I'm just balling. We were like, Kawhi, man, you're going to go to the league? What's up, man? You going to get the check? He's like, yeah, man, I'm just, you know, I'm just doing my thing, you know, and uh, just relaxing, man. You know, this is when, this is when, you know, he was a young boy. So, Kawhi, he's been the same guy over a span of, what, six years now since I've talked to him. So, of course, he's going to take the high road, but come on, Kawhi, stick up for yourself. Protect yourself next time you get out there. And he may not play tonight, which I don't think he should because they need him down the stretch. They need him at the crib. They need him for those two games in San, in San Antonio. So you got to hold him out, Pop. You got to hold him out. Curry had 40. KD had 34. Game two tonight, LaMarcus Aldridge, I'm issuing an Ember Alert for you. Where are you going to be at? Because last game you had 28, but you got tight and you did not deliver in the clutch moments. So, LaMarcus Aldridge, you left Portland to be a star to play in this type of system, replace Tim Duncan, play like it. Warriors went easily in a runaway. Guarantee it. NHL-wise, Penguins tie up Ottawa and avenge home ice in the Eastern Conference Finals in hockey. Pittsburgh, they are a team that I think will win back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. They've got a lot. Marc-Andre Fleury, He's a man in the net for Pittsburgh that is not going to let anybody score if he doesn't want you to. He is playing like a boss. I do think that if Malkin and Kessel and Crosby continue to ball out, continue to do their thing on the ice, I think that the Pittsburgh Penguins will definitely repeat as champions. I don't know who they're going to play. Maybe it'll be the Ducks, and maybe it'll be the other team. But I will say, we'll just have to see once they get there. Um, He's, excuse me, the Ducks or the Predators. Now, MLB-wise, Houston's got the juice. Top of the, the MLB, 
They ruined Derek Jeter tonight. Why are you gonna do my man Jeter like that? I mean, he just wanted to retire his jersey. He just wanted to chill on Mother's Day. He had his he had his lady out there, his wife with the baby belly. Why would you do that, Alex Bregman, with the leadoff home run? Uh, uh, uh. See y'all in October, though, unless somebody else does their thug fizzle. Colin Kaepernick still can't get a job. Seattle, they're checking for him. Seattle is checking for him to maybe back up Russell Wilson, him or RG3. Now, the only thing I can think about with this Colin Kaeper Kaepernick situation is this is why at work I stay away from the politics Maybe you should take a little lesson from Zono Sports, Colin Kaepernick, because I'm still looking at my watch, and you still not getting no cheese. So I'm just trying to give you a little bit of constructive criticism here. Maybe you should ease up on that type of talk. Now, next show, we'll have some more conference finals talk, hockey, base, well, excuse me, basketball, a little baseball. Depends on what's happening. Hopefully the Cubs will pull themselves out of that below eight, below 500 area, that place that they're hanging like a bottom dweller. Maybe you guys should stop celebrating so much, but we'll get to them sooner or later. Thank you for watching the Zono Sports Show. Always, where you know Zono's.